So the first question I'd like to ask you, you were very young when you first wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the experience that led to that uh, and what it meant for you? It was during the very last Apollo mission, Apollo 17. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine a 10-year-old boy watching an old vacuum tube technology black and white TV yeah. and, uh, and holding on to the rabbit ear antenna to uh, make sure the reception was optimum and watching on TV was uh, none other than astronaut Gene Cernan walking on the moon. And I said, I found my calling. This is what I want to be. Yeah. I want to be an astronaut. So you reached the stars from unlikely, an unlikely place and difficult circumstances. Um, can you tell us more about your family and uh, your early life? First of all, my parents are from Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, um, and ever since my dad was a kid, 15 years old, he would come to the U.S. to work mm -hmm. in the fields, mm -hmm. harvesting uh, whatever was in season. Uh, while most kids love summer vacation, we hated it because that meant we had to work seven days a week out in the fields. Uh, but you, as you can see, it wasn't a very, very uh, conducive environment and the, you know, the socioeconomic challenges that we face were pretty big. When you finally reached orbit, uh, can you describe some of the your activities uh, once you once you were there? Sure. Well, when I reached orbit, first of all, getting to orbit is is a very short time frame. It's only eight and a half minutes. And once you're up there, uh, you reach Miko main engine cutoff. Now you're about 300 miles above ground, and uh, you're going around the world at 17,500 miles an hour. Uh, which means you go around the world once every 90 minutes. You've been where very few people have gone before. What were your initial sensations and impressions? I said, I'm one of about 500 people who have had the privilege of seeing our world from this perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I pushed myself to the other window, and I call that the window to the universe because it's opposite of the Earth. And I look at that, and I go back and see the perfection of our planet, Earth. And I convinced myself, I said, you know, this is too perfect to be a coincidence. I said, there's a supreme being out there that has caused this. And, you know, that just strengthened my faith. Uh, and, and I, you know, I just became more of a believer, just reinforced it. Uh, which was a uh, which was a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I would call it a spiritual experience uh, being up there. Could you say a little bit about your the foundation that you've started? Uh, when I got selected, I noticed that you know I created a big following, especially amongst kids that yearned to see that role model, mm -hmm. and uh, and and I kind of said, man, this is like magic in a bottle. We got to put it in a bottle and. We got to bottle it and distribute it. And so the answer to that was, let's create a foundation uh, based on my name and, uh, and, and design it such that the goal is to increase the number of folks going into the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. And so that's, that's, that's what the foundation does. And it's called Reaching for the Stars. And you could find it at astrojh.org if you look for it on the web. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. All right, thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it.